What is up everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video, so in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ, we're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching right now and looking to trade as we're getting closer to the middle of October here in 2019, and as you guys read in the title, I'm also going to be sharing with you all my opinions right now on whether or not I think the stock market is going to all-time highs and we're also going to discuss some crucial news surrounding the trade war we actually came to a partial trade deal today between the u.s and china which is extraordinary news for the stock market so we'll go over that and my personal opinion on how that's going to affect the stock market so sit back relax if you enjoy the video and you find value in this video feel free to go down below and hit that like button consider subscribing and don't forget to join our free discord group chat and our free facebook group all of those are linked down below and let's get right into it guys starting off here with the spx the s p 500 the 500 largest publicly traded u.s companies very good day today honestly guys you can see here we were up 32 points at the close up 1.09 percent but the funny thing thing is we were actually a lot higher than that literally 20 minutes before the market closed and if we look on the one day one minute you guys can see what I'm talking about we actually dumped 20 points from 29.90 down to around 29.70 within 20 minutes and in my opinion this could be some profit taking right because we can see the markets have risen so much especially the S&P here in the two day span literally from 29.17 up to around 29.93 in the matter of about 48 hours here and that is a gain of around 70 roughly 70 points which is insane so the fact that we did pull down here it's not too crazy in my opinion nonetheless we were up a lot day over day here right and if we zoom out a bit to the four hour chart again it's clear that we're trading in a zone now between 29.50 and this all time high at around 30.25 and we're moving we've moved above these moving averages both the 180 and the 50 SMA which means right now in my opinion the bulls are in control right we also held this trend line as you guys can see across the uh, screen here and this trend line signifies that we held a higher low from the previous meaning that this uptrend that we've been on over the past six months technically it's still intact right and if we push to this all-time high now which again would obviously be above 3025 that would mean the uptrend has really officially continued and confirmed that higher high which at that point we may be getting more gains in the S&P 500 right but let's say over the next couple of days let's say this optimism fizzles off right the markets start to see the negative things about the trade war again hey this market could dump we may be breaking back down 2950 below 2950 below these moving averages then we may be running down again to test this um, uptrend trend line that I have drawn across the uh, across the screen if we break that we may be going down to 2880 and so forth right some of the levels below that on the S&P here are 2810 level below that would be 2740 and I do think there's a possibility if tensions between the US and China they start to come back again they maybe don't agree on certain things maybe more tariffs get put on here in a couple of weeks who knows right with the you know with the tension with everything that's been going on anything is possible right now between the U.S. and China and this trade deal, right? Sure, there's some short-term euphoria now, optimism due, uh, optimism due to this little trade, mini trade deal, partial, partial trade deal they came to, but don't let that cloud your judgment when it comes to the negative sides that are still out there that are still dampering between the U.S. and China, right? So if we go to the Dow very quickly, you guys can see 320 points in the green today, up 1.21% at the close. On the one day, one minute, you can see we actually hit 27,000. We peaked above it. Then in the last 20 minutes, the market dumped 200 points uh, in terms of the Dow Jones here, which is pretty significant. 200 points in 20 minutes, that's a pretty sizable drop. But nonetheless, day over 
over day here. We hit a low 26.3 yesterday, 27,000 again, like I mentioned, was the peak today. So that's a move of around 700 points in two days. So the fact that we did pull down here a bit, it's not surprising me. Um, you know, overall, the trend has been up over these past couple of days, even with this little pullback. As you guys can see, we're maintaining these moving averages as supports on this five day, five minute chart. And if we zoom out a bit to let's say this 20 day, one hour, you can see bulls are in control. We're trending above moving averages. We broke above the 180 SMA today. That's a very good sign. And if we go back to that four hour chart, we're trending between 26.6 right now as a support and that all-time high at around 27.3 as a resistance. So technically, guys, we held the higher low here, as you can see, based on the trend line that I just drew. We're still at a lower high, but if we break out of these all-time highs, hit that higher high, that's going to be the really the full-on confirmation of the continuation of the uptrend, right? But let's say on the flip side, we get some negative news around trade again, economy, whatever it may be, we start to dump down below. Watch 26.6. If we break that, we may be going down to test that same uptrend uh, support line here. And then maybe we go down to test 26.2. If we dump, we may be going down 25.9. We may be going down 25.6 and so forth, right? So going to the NASDAQ now, guys, up 100 points here, up 1.27%. We broke above 78.40, very prominent level of resistance. Now we're trending below 79.50 and above that same. 7840 level that I just mentioned, putting us in this 100 point window on the NASDAQ, right? If we go to the 20 day one hour, you can see bulls are in control here. We're no longer trending below these 180 SMA resistance levels, the 50 SMA resistance levels. We're now holding those as supports. We're seeing a bullish cross here, the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA. And again, that break above 7840. These are all good signs that we're in a reverse uptrend right now. Bulls are in control, right? And if we go to that one day, one minute here, you can see the aggressive dump with about 20 minutes left in the market. This went from around 79.20 all the way down to around 78.40 within 20 minutes, and that's a drop of around 80 points, guys. That's pretty, pretty insane here um, in the NQ. And overall, guys, I know I'm saying that on the smaller time frames, we are seeing bullish breakout potential here, but until, again, like I mentioned on the S&P and the Dow, until we break these all-time highs, you know, obviously this uptrend is not fully, fully... Um, kind of confirmed in a sense, right? If you guys know what I mean, we're still technically at lower highs, but again, it's kind of in a weird wedge position at this point, right? All of these indexes. So just keep an eye on this wedge again on the NQ. You can see it on the Dow as well. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? You can see that we're kind of in this iffy spot right now where we're in an uptrend, but at the same time, we're making lower highs. So just keep an eye on what is going to happen at these levels. Levels. So that is kind of the overall market update today. I'm going to pull up my Safari tab to show you all what went down today very, very quickly. And again, I'm sure a lot of you already know this, but if you didn't really pay attention today or yesterday to the markets, this is going to be news to you, right? And this is going to be pretty, pretty good news to you. So as part of the deal, China would agree to some agricultural concessions and the U.S. would provide some tariff relief. And you can see down here, these tariffs, there is going to be a tariff increase on October 15th. These have been suspended, right? So the pact is tentative and subject to change. This is one, I guess you can say negative thing as Trump prepares to sit down with China's vice premier. Actually, this was earlier today. So I don't know if it's still tentative. Um, yeah, I have to look deep, uh, look deeper into that. But nonetheless, the deal under discussion, which is subject to Trump's approval, would suspend a planned tariff, like I just mentioned on October 15th. It also may delay or call off levies scheduled to take effect in mid-December. Such an agreement would be the first breakthrough in the 18-month trade war that has hurt the economies of both nations. So you guys have to understand, this trade war has been going on for a very long time. And whenever we see optimism, like this is some really good news, honestly, this is really good news right here. 
this is going to be very, very good and positive for the stock market. It's obvious why the markets have been running up. It's because of this, right? While the limited agreement, and this is a negative thing here, pay attention to this, guys. While the limited agreement may resolve some short-term issues like these tariffs, the agricultural concessions, stuff like that, several of the thorniest disputes, thorniest disputes, remain outstanding. U.S. goals in the trade war center around accusations of intellectual property theft. I know a lot of you guys have done research on that. Forced technology transfer and complaints about Chinese industrial subsidies. So the fact that we got a partial trade deal, a lot of the main stuff, a lot of the main problems they're still up in the air, right? So the fact that, again, this might just be some short-term relief in the market because the, the, the main problems, they're still over our heads, which honestly leads me to believe here that I don't think these markets are going to hit these all-time highs, to be completely honest with you guys. As you guys read in the title, you know, these these over over um, lying problems here that have not really been solved. I think these are going to have a damper on these markets still. And honestly, guys, next week I do believe that these markets are going to lose some steam just because of this partial deal. I don't think everything is sunshine and rainbow rainbows and daisies and daffodils now, right? I don't think the markets are going to just fly up now. That would just be pretty ignorant of the markets to do that, knowing that they're. There's still a lot of problems surrounding this trade war, the economy slowing, corporate debt, all of this different stuff. So are the markets going to hit all time highs at this point? I don't think so, right? If they do in the short term, ultimately, I don't think it's going to last. I think these markets are going to lose steam, which is why I actually bought a put today, just one contract that we're going to talk about here in a couple of minutes in the trading update. So I'd love to know what you guys have to think about the trade deal, this partial trade deal, the trade war, where the markets are going. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys think about that. So overall today, guys, I bought that put that we'll talk about here in a minute. But before that, actually, I forget which one was first. I think this trade might have been first. Anyway, I traded DGAS today on this little dip. I actually did not really make any money because it didn't end up panning out. But I want to show you guys what my thought process was on this trade, right? So DGAS goes up whenever natural gas is going down, right? Our theory, my theory on natural gas is I think it has um, I think it has some downside here in the short term. And as I've been saying that over the past couple of videos, natural gas has been falling, right? And if we look here, let's say on the five day, five minute, let me show you guys. Um, where did I get in? I think I ended up getting in as natural gas saw this rally, right? I was looking to see, are we going to break out of here? That would have been very bullish, but ultimately we actually got rejected at a lower high. So at this point, this would have been great um, for DGAS right here, right? From about, what, what time was this? 11 a.m. down to this level here. But actually, I got in, I believe, too late. I, 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 it just didn't end up panning out. Let me see. I'm kind of I'm kind of forgetting here what happened. So DGAS, it really never ran when I got into it. This is actually where I got in on this big dip again when we saw natural gas pop up, but it never ended up panning out. And I ended up just taking, I don't know if it was a little loss. I think it was a little loss because I don't hold these over the weekend, right? So that's kind of what ended up happening. It never broke out. I was looking to see natural gas dump, but it really, it, it, it really it did, but it didn't really correlate to DGAS popping, which is kind of odd at, at the same time, right? But that's really what I did. Traded DGAS, not really anything. It was more of a break even, little loss there because it didn't pan out. And again, I don't hold these over the weekend. That's just my personal style. And I bought a put. Let me tell you guys what I did. I'm pulling up my Robinhood right now. And by the way, I do buy, um, I do options on Robinhood. And I do have a Robinhood link down below. If you do sign up and put 100 bucks, you do actually get a free stock if you want to. If not, it doesn't really matter, right? Use whatever broker you want, but it's there if you do want that free stock. And Robinhood, I ended up buying a put. Let me put my password in. This might take a little second here, guys. Sorry. But okay, limit price, $1.12 premium here. I bought it at $12.05, and it was an SPY put, $286 uh, uh, strike price at $12.05. 
10 dollar or uh, 1028 uh, October 28 expiration date. So SPY for those of you guys that do not know, I'm sure again a lot of you guys know this already, but this is called Spider, hence why there's a spider right here. And this is an ETF, probably the most known ETF that tracks the S&P 500. And I bought this put, honestly, it wasn't that much money, right? I put 110 111 dollars here one contract at a dollar 11. Um again $286 strike price, 1028 expiration date. I really bought this to really hedge against the downside here in the market. Sure, markets have been doing great. My overall stock market portfolio, my long portfolio with my long-term positions, it's been doing great over these past couple of days. But I think, again, like I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, I think the steam, uh, you know, this 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 run right here, the steam is going to fizzle out in a couple of days. And overall, if this market drops, I'm going to make money on my put options, right? This is something that a lot of people do to hedge against, you know, the, the, a market that they think is going to fall. And then when the market falls, if it falls, the money you make from the put option, you can take these profits and then buy more stocks at a lower price as the market falls. That's why it's called hedging because the market's dropping. Sure, your long positions are losing money, but if you buy a contract, a couple of contracts of put options, you're going to make money on those despite your long positions losing money you'll make money on the on the options, then you can buy more stock if that's what you want to do, or you can do whatever else you want with the profits. But overall, I'll update you guys on this. Sure, my, my contract might expire worthless. I might lose all of my money, but that's okay because I'm looking to hedge against my long positions, guys. That's kind of the point. My risk here is the whole premium that I paid, which again is $111. I can potentially lose this if the option expires worthless or if the options expire worthless. But let's see, right? I'll update you guys on the channel, of course. And let me know down below if you guys do want me. I know a lot of you guys have been asking. I haven't made any options videos, but if you guys do want me to make some beginner option videos, whatever it may be on Robinhood, I can do that for you. Let me know down below in the comments if there's enough demand I'll make a video. So that's what I ended up doing. Um, spy put here and uh, D gas, which never ended up panning out. And honestly, guys, for this upcoming week, I'm just looking at spy. Of course, I want to see what this is going to do. Are we going to end up breaking above 297? And the fact that we really didn't break above that at all today, or we did, but we ended up pushing down below it again. That's a bit bearish in my opinion, right? So what are we going to do here? Are we going to end up ultimately getting below 295, which in that case, if that happens, guys, I think I'm going to make some good money on these puts if it happens soon enough, because these puts do expire in about 17 days. I don't know if the market, get, I don't know, we'll see if the market gets very rocky, we get into 290, 292 down, down here. And especially if we break this ultimate level, um, 286, where I do have my strike that's going to be very good for me, right? But I'm watching SPY. I'm, of course, watching UGAS and DGAS. Ultimately here, guys, UGAS is still downtrending. We're still trending below that 50 SMA, so DGAS could be a play here if UGAS does not break above this 50 SMA, right? Think about it. If we run up here, get rejected, and start to sell off, if natural gas, NG here, starts to get rejected and break below 220 especially, which is a very bearish sign, DGAS is going to have a lot of potential right? Because if NG breaks below 220, we may be going down to 210, which is one of the next supports, really the next support on natural gas. And if that does fill the gap down, DGAS is going to go to the moon, guys. So those are some that I'm watching. I'm watching Apple. Apple's been doing quite well, guys. Today hit another all-time high, 236, up six points, up $2 or 2.66% rather. I'm watching Facebook. A dollar, $184 close today, up $4 today. Very, very good. We're slowly breaking above the 180 SMA. This could be interesting. Maybe we fell up to 190 here if these markets do stay strong. If the markets dump, maybe put options short term on F uh, FB, Facebook could be an opportunity as well. If we talk about gold a little bit, I'm assuming gold dumped today. I didn't really take a look at it too much to be completely honest with you guys, but we did break below 1495 today, which is a 
a very bearish sign. We may be filling down the gap as indicated by these arrows here, or this arrow, one arrow, down to about 1465. That is the next support that I'm seeing. So in the meantime, GDX looks like it has downside, right? We may push to that lower low. And what happens when GDX is going down, guys? JDST, which goes up whenever GDX is going down, is obviously going up, right? So JDST... I see some potential in this one this week, um, next week rather, on Monday, Tuesday, again, if gold GDX do end up dumping. So I don't want to spend too much time on this video, guys. Let me know down below in the comments, what did you trade? Let me know if you want me to talk about any stocks in this upcoming video, which is on Sunday. And by the way, every single Sunday, I'm making videos or one video where I'm going over what I'm doing for the upcoming week, stocks I'm watching, my plan, things to look out for, earnings, all these different things. So make Make sure to subscribe and again, drop a comment. Let me know if you want me to talk about any ticker symbols. So if you enjoy this video, I'm sure you guys did find value in it, especially if you stuck till the end. Feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing and join our Discord group chat, guys. I guarantee you'll find value in there. We have about like 820 plus members in there and the Facebook group is doing some decent numbers now too. It's at 250 people talking. So I guarantee you guys will find a bunch of value in there. And my Instagram at stock. Surfest is linked down below as well. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Have a great weekend. Hope you all did well this week. Hope you all prepare for the next week. It's going to be rocky, guys. I'm excited. Peace out.